How to build a container image using APKO. You might be used to using Docker files to create your container images. APKO is a tool that allows you to build distroless images using a declarative configuration without having to create a Docker file. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.319.3. And attached to this controller, I have an Alpine Linux based agent. There is a link to a sample repository down in the description. I've already gone ahead and set up a pipeline job to run a Jenkins file. Now let's take a look at this Jenkins file that I've set up. And in Jenkins file one, what I have is just a command to run apko version and then the output from help. So let's go back over to our controller and let's go ahead and run this job. And what we'll see from the output of this job is that we're running APKO version 0.1.2. And from the output of help, we can see that we can build. We can do build-mini root fs. We can add in completions for our shell. We don't really need completions since we're running this within our pipeline. We have help. We have publish. And we have version, which we already saw as 0.1.2. Now let's go over and take a look at the APKO documentation and the link to this repository is also down in the description. And it gives us the basics of why APKO. It gives us the ability to build OCI images for APK-based distributions declaratively. And it takes us through the why and then the hows. But let's take a look at what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be building an image based on a YAML file. So that's our declaration. And we'll say APKO build, we'll give it a YAML file, we'll give it a tag, and then by default, it's going to create a tar file that we could then load into Docker, and then we could run that image from Docker. Now we can also go ahead and do a publish and publish our image out to a container registry. We're gonna be doing both of these things in just a few moments. Now, why might you want to consider using APKO? If you take a look at some of the features, you get sub-second image build times. Pretty cool. Service bundles. Some containers are complex, lots of services that need to run in there. Well, if you define a service bundle, it will take care of all of that S6 overlay stuff for you automatically. And in the future, SBOMs will be automatically generated for any of your images that you create. So let's go back over to our sample repository and let's take a look at Jenkins file dash two. And what you're going to see here is we're gonna be running sudo, we'll talk about that in a moment, apko build, Nginx YAML, we'll take a look at that. I'm giving it this tag right here. And then I'm also specifying the tar file that will be generated. And then I'm just gonna be able to list out the directory so you can see that the tar file is created. Now, why sudo? At this point, APKO requires sudo to build any of our images. With my agent and how I'm connected to my agent over SSH, the account that I'm connected with has sudo privileges. So if you're going to be using APKO within your pipeline, you're going to have to make sure that the user that you're connected as has sudo privileges. Now, what is this Nginx YAML? Well, if we go back into this repository, we'll see Nginx YAML. And this is copied over from the APKO example directory. And what you can see here is that you specify a repository and the packages that you want to install. So unlike a Docker file where you may be also building the images, APKO requires that you have a repository and that the packages that you want to install are in that repository. We talked about the service bundles a few moments ago. The definition of the service bundle in our case is just startup Nginx. So let's go ahead and go back over to our pipeline and let's modify our job and we're gonna run Jenkins file dash two. So we'll change this, click on save and click on build now. And what we can see here is it does run very fast. So we have our sudo apko build nginx yaml, the tag that I wanted, and then the tar file. So we're building the image, here's the tag from config file nginx yaml. It gives us our information about our build context, pre-flight checks, it does the apk add, then as it's going through, it's doing the installation for the two packages that we specified. And then finally here, we're building our OCI image with a tag 
from this temporary layer, and then the image is output to output.tar. And we can see here from the output that output.tar exists right here in our directory. Now let's flip back over to our Nginx YAML file and call out one thing. When this was created, this was created as the user root. So if we were to spin up this image, it would run as the root user. Fortunately, there is another way that we can define our YAML file and we can add in accounts. So we don't want our images to run as root. That's okay. We can go ahead and specify a username and a group name and specify the run as. So when the service starts, it's gonna run as that user. So what we have here is in Jenkins file three. The only thing that we've changed out is changing our Nginx YAML to Nginx rootless YAML. So let's go ahead and modify our job and let's run this. So apko configure and dash three. If we click on build now, we'll see that the output is exactly the same as what we saw with just Nginx YAML. It's just that within the image as it was being built, it created that user and then set up the service so when it starts that it will run as the Nginx user instead of root. But at this point, our images are still just local. How do we publish our images up to a container registry? Well, we saw as we looked through the help, we could do a build, but we could also do a publish. So let's take a look at Jenkins file four. And with Jenkins file four, what I have is apko publish nginx rootless, and then the tag. So we're not specifying the tar, but we are specifying the tag. So what's going to happen with apko publish, or specifically sudo apko publish, is that the image will be built and then it will be pushed to the container registry. Now, what we have to specify is a login for publish. So we're saying Docker login, and I'm going to be pushing this image up to Docker Hub. At this point, I've already created my Docker Hub credentials and they're already set up inside of Jenkins. And I'm able to reference these credentials by using dh-creds. So I'm doing a login to Docker we're gonna do our publish, and then we're gonna do our log out. Notice also that since we're running sudo apko, I'm also running my Docker login as sudo, and I'm also doing a sudo Docker log out. So because I'm doing sudo here, I also need to do sudo for my Docker commands. So let's go back over to our job and make the modification to run Jenkins file dash four and click on build now. And again, much like the two build commands, we see that we're doing the apko publish in this case. All the other information is the same. The first thing it's going to do is build the image. Once it has everything set up, we see that the image is created into a temp file, which is okay. And then finally, what it's doing is it's pushing up the image. In our case, we're using Docker Hub to Docker Hub with this SHA, and then it does a log out. If we go over to Docker Hub, let me refresh this page. What we're going to see now is that there is a repository for Jenkins example APKO, and we can see that it was pushed just about a minute ago. If you're unsure about how to interact with Docker Hub from Jenkins, go back and watch the how to push a Docker image to Docker Hub using Jenkins. The link to that video is down in the description. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.